Testing, testing, one, two, one, two. Hey guys, Devil here, and it's time to explain the three situations of the channel. So, um, you have no idea how many takes I've been trying to do this just to, um, summarize a few things. And you know what? To get them out of the way so I can get to number three, because you have no idea how much this took trying to do this without voodoo my father because you know sometimes i don't have the guts to talk but i feel like i really do need to grow up hair and speak up i want three situations about this channel and it'll all start off with my weird coming and goings of god of war <laughs> So, the reason why I'm not doing God of War on the channel yet, anymore, is because, um, I've been trying to get the whole, uh, PlayStation remote thing that, that they have on this program, and it's not been really working out well, so, yeah, it kind of sucks. Heck, I, the fact that I even made a short on this, like, literally, I made a short on this and yet here I am still ignoring the fact that I still don't play God of oh my god sorry back here but uh yeah that's one of the situations there with me and my God of War problem basically I'm thinking of trying to do it on a TV again like trying to do the old times again so Expect me trying to go back and do a whole different uh thing from like this again because I'm willing to go back and maybe I should try doing um Atomic Heart again. I love Atomic Hearts and yet just like God of War, I ignored it. I'm being pretty serious. Anyway, uh, <laughs> um, now to lead to the second situation I got here. Oh, this might take a while. Let me just pause it here. No. Oh, no. Yes! Oh! <laughs> so, yeah, it's not about. <laughs> anyway, um, it's not about, um, uh, the scary toilet video. It's basically about me and my stemming. That has been. Don't know what that's for. But, uh, this. Yeah, Voodoo had a big, try to do a big talk with this. And I did tell him that I did want to try talk, talking about this on the video. So I'm glad this is the second situation I'm pointing out. This isn't my first critic. Well, it's my first critic on the channel. But it's not really, you know, like, um... My first ever in history. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to put this out. There's no way I could stop my stemming because, you know, I, I'm autistic and I, I can't stop that. Yep. Wow. Big, big, uh, big, um, discovery here. I'm freaking autistic. Look, I gotta be a lot more truthful with on this channel because I already said on one of my glow reactions that I was getting more comfortable with this. But uh unfortunately I got too much out of my comfort zone. You now see a man waving his arms like this. <laughs> Just really all this, I I really apologize for getting too comfortable. I mean, I know the guy was just trying to ask a question. Why do you dance when a fight, when a fight's going on and the guys are winning? That's because that's how hype the episode got me. The episode was so hype that I just got out of my comfort zone and did this. Ooh! 
Like, literally, I just started to get way too comfortable on camera. And even this guy pointed it out. So, yeah. Um, pretty much it. That was my fault, I could say. I'm sorry if this made you uncomfortable. And you have every right to say that my reaction is bad. Because I've, I've actually grown to care less about criticism. But just to say... um. Your critic, it means to me. Not as much as the critics on the Mario movie, though, but they mean to me sometimes. And you know what? I can say that with proud, with pride and proudness. What? <laughs> but, um, yeah, I just want to say I'm sorry. Yeah, Voodoo had to go through this whole thing. He didn't really have to. I didn't see this one. Did Voodoo like this? There's nothing to really feel bad about. Yeah, there's, there's really nothing to feel bad about because this is on me. This is my fault. And I should have been more um, considerate about how my comfort zone was. I got too comfortable and this is what it led to. My autism being released like a fucking idiot. Um... <laughs> but um out of seriousness yes you don't know what this is supposed to mean yeah I also wanted to say thank you to this man he actually pointed out that the fook um yes! oh! ah! I didn't even see that that the fook was there nor did I notice but um I just want to say, again, I apologize for doing such actions. I, I'm really sorry. But now, with all sad things out of the way, because I know I cannot redeem this, let's go to the final one, which I am proud of. And it's about this. The Hell of a Boss Season 3 Glutton Wrath thing that I've got going on here. So, yeah, um... This is actually pretty much of a funny story. Uh, I like to do voice acting. You could possibly tell because I posted these. But, um... This was basically not just years of practicing voice acting. But this was a highly inspired thing from, um... Demon Dagger Studio. Uh, Demon Dagger Productions. Demon Dagger Productions. They've, uh, hold on, let me, let me just show you them real quick, hold up. Yeah, so this is him, this is him and his little production thing. Yeah, basically he did all these audio voicing things. I'm, I'm also one that's waiting for chapter six to come in. I'm very hyped. This series blew me out of the roof because I don't know why, but I know this is basically based off of a, a document thing about Hell of a Boss. Like a little story to human in the hellhound. Like some type of shipping. That became a long story. But um. Oh. This was one of the stories that I wish that I could relive forever. I'm excited for episode 6. But watching these back. Is just amazing. Just trying to say. And yet. You don't realize it. But these guys. This guy. Or these people that decided to work on something that started off something as something else and then became this something beautiful it blew my mind and made me feel so much determined on voice acting forever like i know years i've been watching so many movies and so many of this so many of that, that i've been practicing so many voices it used to be team fortress 2 was mostly inspiring me but Get it? Because up on the screen is up. No, I'm joking. Um, I gotta say, this inspired me more than Team Fortress 2 did. I was so caught up in trying to do um, Scout's voice. Like, oh, maybe I can do it. It's It's been a while since I've done it. Oh, I shouldn't feel scared. Hold up. I'm, I'm already revealing a lot of things. Let me just... Think fast, Chocolate Nuts! Probably screamed to the mic for that. 
Hey, bro, but it's scramble like an egg before you get folded like an omelet. <laughs> hey, you don't want to test me. You don't want to test me right now. Because if you want to catch this walk, I'm going to hit you with a bonk. <laughs> Tell me, rate, rate my impression on that. It's been a while, so maybe it won't sound as good, but, um, you know, Chocolate Hits, just, just let me know. Just let me know, Chocolate Hits. Think fast, Chocolate Nuts! <laughs> One of my favorite lines, um, but, uh, basically, now back to it. They inspired me to do all this, and I freaking love it. I don't know where this will take Zach Trevel. Maybe I should read up on the documentary somewhere about the human and the hellhound, but I am going to stay patient and wait for the next episode. Like, just to see this man. Like, he actually inspired me to... Whoa. I, hey, what... What kind of stream? What kind of stream is this? So I watched the stream. <laughs> and I feel baited. <laughs> yeah. I, I have weird simping problems. You can tell that I'm a simp. But anyway, um, back to it. Thank you, Demon Dagger Productions, for making that. You've inspired me so much that I decided to do this. I know my Moxie impression fucking sucks. But, um, yeah. So now, let me explain uh, more. You know what, since we're already on the topic, let me explain some things about this one. <laughs> oh boy, here it comes. <laughs> there you go, much proper. Now I got a full screen. <laughs> so, um... To explain the episode 2 thing, this takes place from what I scripted for episode 1, fan made by the way, not canon. But he's gonna make it pop, what? <laughs> um, so basically you can tell it's fan made because I'm using a lot of other music. I do sponsor them in the links in the description. They have great music. And I thank them for letting me use it. It it says that the owner gave permission for me to use them. I thank you. Because unlike King's Elliot, she didn't let me use, um... Well, I can't actually use that ex as excuse because it was way different before. Way, way different than what I'm doing right now. That was a game that I could not stop the copyright. <laughs> I mean, I could have muted it, but it was so beautiful that I wanted to keep it on the channel. But, uh, I kept it. Still. I mean, it might be blocked for other countries, but... It's alright. I, I, maybe I'll try to do a re-upload on it. And maybe I'll try to, like, sponsor her in time. Before she catches me off. Because, Kings Elliot, I love your music. Please let me have it for the final. Of that very old, uh, eight or nine months video. You know, of Callisto Protocol. Please, I beg. Please, I'm a big fan. <laughs> But now, um, back to it, um, to explain the episode, this is basically after a tremendous battle with Belezebub and Satan versus the IMP. Moxie and Satan were just going off the rowing hands. Hence, meanwhile, Millie, Blitz, and Luna are getting their asses whooped by B. You, you could already tell why. And the only reason why I enjoyed trying to script that scene is because I hate big people. <laughs> I'm joking. But, uh, yeah, sometimes I have the urge to fight tall people. Literally. Sometimes. If they're meanie, don't be meanie. <laughs> but um, after the traumatic events of episode one, Famade, Moss against... Sucker Punch straight up to the sky. Satan tried to find a soft landing for him so he wouldn't die. So he had no choice but to land into a random uh, supply cart on a train. A random train to uh, Pentagram City. So then they have the little moment and 
Mox is now going to help Satan try to discover his a little thing that's going on with B and why the breakup with Vortex and her, what happened, and who did it. I'm going to make a pilot of who did, and it's just, like I said, it's going to be fan-made. It's going to go on the Angels' side of the story. They're taking on the story. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys will enjoy it. But now to explain the biggest part of it, like I said, situation number three is going to be the longest before I get to the conclusion of it. Um, now I have Satan's character. One of my favorite sins is the Lord of Wrath, a.k.a. Satan, a.k.a. the dark side of Lucifer. So I made him in the story, basically brothers. So I have a whole lore planned out for this. So let me just pause this, take my breath, and I'll explain it to you. All right. So without further ado, let's explain what I've written for this. So basically, Satan was this overpowered, still is, ruler amongst the Wrath Ring and tried to go amongst other rings. He's done slavery. He's done against revolutions. He's basically gone against the whole entire hell system. Alongside with his brother, Lucifer. And there's also one thing I wanted to clear up in the part two of the demo of episode two. I know that uh, one of the lower ranks, uh, lower rank sloth, I forgot his name, I put it in the description. But um, basically... He said something about him being seven, seven foot or something like seven feet, seven foot, whatever. But basically he's actually eight, seven. He's that tall. That was my mistake. I'm not going to redo the video because it took so freaking long. You have no idea how many discord calls have been going on here. And I mean, it's a banger, but um, I don't need that right now. <laughs> so um, back to it. Satan always had this empty hole inside of him, so he thought taking over hell and possibly going to war with heaven would help that. He was about to go to war with heaven, but he still kept fe feeling that emptiness, even as a ruler. So as one day he was walking in the hallway with his questioning of emptiness, a slave that was trying to escape, it was a hellhound, bumped into his leg. She started to cry and hoped that she was crying for no reason, or mercy will be sent upon her soul. She was a little hellhound. She was a baby. And basically, Satan, for somehow, felt some type of weird feeling. So then they talked for a bit, and the kid kind of made him smile. He felt happy. But then he came to the realization, what the hell just happened? Why was I not me? So then afterwards, they decided to talk a bit more. And by the way, the little hellhound, his name is Lunar. <clears throat> Not trying to hit that <clears throat> fan-made little sister of <clears throat> Luna. <laughs> but, um, basically, they had their whole history. Lucifer realized what the hell was going on, literally. After two years, he finally caught on. And then he decided to do what needed to be done. Get rid of the problem. What was the problem? Lunar. That voice crack. Holy crap. <clears throat> and again. Who was the problem? Lunar. Better, right? Better? Yeah, better. <laughs> so, even as Lucifer sent the strongest guards to hold him back while they were trying to stab her and make her suffer as possible for changing Satan, Satan just started... Punching holes in him. He was making donuts. And then he, he was able to save her. But yet she was still badly wounded. Due to the angelic weapons that were used on the poor baby. As she was bleeding. He was trying to run into the streets. Trying to call out for help. But everyone feared him. So no one came out to help. He could have commanded all of them to come out. But yet for some reason he didn't. Because he felt different. You probably see where I'm trying to hint at this. He didn't feel like the overlord, like 
the almighty, he didn't feel that anymore. He felt different. And no, he wasn't built, well, he was kind of built different. He was basically that type of titan. He wasn't really a titan, but basically he was, I'm using wrong words. He was basically more of a brute. But yet, seeing this side of him kind of changes it. But yet, since no one helped, Saiyan tried to find a way to, there goes Discord. Saiyan tried to find a way to help her by trying to find something to heal her or anything like that to heal all the wounds. But yet, what well, he didn't know that it was too late. He saw the soulless eyes of a dead child with her last tear falling out her eyes. Sid had mixed emotions. He had anger. He had freaking fury. Look at this core trying to get it. Sucker, I know how to edit. Watch. <laughs> kind of. It's about to I was saying. Sid had a mixture of sadness and anger. Lucifer found him in the alleyway, saying that this is for his own good. So then Satan said, put your paws up. We are squaring up at the spot. So yeah, they had their little brotherly fight. And surprisingly enough, Satan won. Satan was most likely the powerful lord around here. Even though Lucifer has his little things. Like he's the, the kind of like the absolute king of hell. Nothing matched to... Satan because he was more likely the dark side. So basically he was Lucifer. But basically more pure evil. That at least that's how he started. So after there either even after sending Lucifer down to his knees, about to kill him, he realized he still lost. He experienced his first loss in a lifetime. He realized that there was no other way of doing it, and he failed to protect something that he loved. So then he just put his blades away and just walked away. The brothers departed without a handshake. How sad is that? <laughs> but anyway, now back to the, to the years later. This is going to lead up to how Season 1, Episode 8, where B was talking about how she felt like she was almost about to die, or was possibly going to die, in the presence of Satan before. So here's how I saw that story. Basically, Satan wanted, after years, wanted to meet up with all the lords besides Lucifer, because he didn't feel like he could encounter... Not now. Oh my god. Not now. I'm going to figure out how to mute Xbox for now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, basically, he wanted to give a whole reunion to meet all the lords again, besides Lucifer. And then they had their whole meetup, and then what he didn't realize is the one he invited, Belezebub, was going to change his life forever. Belezebub came in with such a chill vibe, excitement. And <clears throat> let's just say it kind of made him attracted to her because it just changed his world to see even in depressing times like these, sometimes you just got to give a smile. And then he feels that it's it's impressive. So as they walked by, um, and after B said her little um saying that same was hot or something. Then, and then saying, give her the whole. What? <laughs> so after all that, he said they started hanging out more. They got drunk before. And then became best buddies. And now taking place in this. um, <clears throat> There will be an, a fan made episode, which will possibly include Sarah. To do the voicing for B. Because I am not doing freaking voices for females. Don't even question me about the other one. About how I was doing the voicing for the uh, for the lower lust ring guy. And his gay freaking voice. That was his character. And that's how I developed him. And I had no other friends to do it. So it was all me. You're welcome. <laughs> I sacrificed my voice for all of it. 
That's how much voice acting means to me. You're welcome. <laughs> so yeah, basically in this time period, yeah, this was six days before, hey, before the incident in the fan made episode one that's gonna come out soon. That happened between um, B Satan, and, and the IMP. After a bit, he figured out that Vortex broke up with her. Her, he had his power sense to discover what was going on. He felt that Vortex did it for a good and valuable reason. And about the insensitivity that was going on on the internet, you could literally watch the first demo of episode two to figure that out. And then they went to war from there. Blah blah blah. And yeah, it's basically the plot for that. There's going to be more, but I'm not going to explain any more further. But now, um, the the part two basically doesn't really have those. It has new characters that I invented myself. They were they're basically like the lower uh, ranks of um. Oh, let me step up that. Um, they're basically the lower ranks of. Well, supposedly lower ranks of the lo the lords, but basically they're a little weaker than them. I did the uh, sloth, the envy, the gluttony, the pride, and the lust. So basically, those are the five that are gonna basically be facing against um, IMP and the two lords just for a bit. I made them up on my own, so feel proud that I made these demons. <laughs> I'm thinking the first one I should do is gain Millie versus Kobani. If you don't know who Kobani is, he is the uh, lower rank of Pride, who is basically a bit weaker than uh, Lucifer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so I'm thinking of doing that later, but now to the conclusion of it, voice acting has been my thing. I was so glad that people had to decide to watch them just for a bit. I know it only has like 30 views or 31, but I feel proud that people actually decided to watch them. So I thank you. And this mostly goes to Demon Dagger Studio. Demon Dagger Productions. I keep saying studios. It's in my blood, okay? But, um, thank you so much for watching about this theory situation that's going on. About why I'm doing this, um, Hell of a Boss series. Why I do my stemming and how I can't really stop that. And why I haven't posted God of War. <laughs> I'm Devil signing off, saying I have a devilish evening and a heavenly good night. I'm Devil, not with Voodoo this time, signing off. And until then... Peace.